And the question goes to you. Bill Clinton, if you see a turtle on a fence post, you know it didn't get there by itself. <laughs> all of creation, all this complex world we see around us is a turtle on a fence post. Behe looks at complicated subcellular biology and says, this couldn't have happened randomly. Meyer looks at the fossil record and says, too many things just appear. And John Lennox runs the maths and says, if there's a code, maybe there's a coder. Now, it's one thing to observe certain limits to what Darwin and others may have been able to explain. Mm -hmm. The explanation stops here. That's as far as we can get. Mm. And it's something quite different to cross that line and say, oh, I think I see what's on the other side. Are you in for intelligent design? I'm in for answering your question about the two pictures, first of all. Ah, you no. asked me how much information is contained in those two pictures. Yes, I did. I suspect it's almost equal. I think the question you should have asked is how much truth is contained in those two pictures. Now, to come back to your precise question, the first picture shows what people commonly call the ascent of man yes. from lower animals. Yes. Now, here's where Darwin helped me massively by expressing in a letter a profound doubt. He said, you know, and I'm only paraphrasing because I haven't got the quote in my head. He said, you know, I'm troubled by the fact that if my explanation is correct, then how do we account for the human capacity for rational thought? He said, after all, if we started with lower animals and a monkey's mind, he said, well, is there any thinking in a monkey's mind? Now, hold that just for a moment, because I have lots of fun with my scientific friends. I sometimes ask them, what do you do science with? And of course, they name some expensive machine. I say, no, no, oh, they say, you mean, you're, and they're about to say mind when they realize that's not politically correct. And they say your brain. I said, OK, well, I believe the brain and the mind are separate, but what is your brain? Um, give, me the, give me the brief history of the brain. I ask them, and I've done this many times. It's fascinating. And they say, well, the brain in the end is the end product of a, a mindless, unguided process. And I smile at them and I say, and you trust it? Uh. I say, now tell me honestly, that computer you use every day, if you knew that it was the end product of a mindless, unguided process, would you trust it? Now, here's the thing. I have spoken with dozens of leading scientists and pushed them on this, and every single one has said no. I said, you have a problem. Because you are giving me an argument that undermines rationality. And they turn to me and, and they say, where did you get that argument? I said, well, firstly, from Charles Darwin. They say, I don't believe you. And then I quote Darwin, yeah. Darwin's doubt. This not was his the other one, doubt. Yeah. That's his other doubt. Yeah. Darwin's doubt about the reliability of human of rationality. Yeah. Now, this, to my mind, goes to the heart of the implication of the whole business. And it's why I believe that there is an intelligence behind the universe. I'm a mathematician. All mathematicians and scientists are people of faith, not necessarily in God, but they believe in the rational intelligibility of the universe. And now, the reliability what's, of the mind. Uh, yes, that. exactly. Yeah. And therefore, what do they base that on? If you base that on a mindless, unguided evolutionary process, you're destroying rationality. C.S. Lewis saw that in the 1940s. He said, any theory that undermines rationality cannot be true because you're using your rationality to get to it. Alvin Plantinga has worked on it, but the most interesting person who brings it now to the fore is Thomas Nagel, the philosopher in New mm -hmm. York. And he says there's something wrong here because if you follow evolutionary naturalism, it undermines the very rationality you need to believe, not only in evolutionary naturalism, but in any theory at all. So my major problem, uh, Peter, in all of this is not the mathematics. That's just an interesting bit of evidence. It's that here I am engaged in a rational discipline of mathematics. That all dissolves 
if the evolutionary naturalistic um, account is true. In other words, I often say to people, shooting yourself in the foot is painful, but shooting yourself in the brain is fatal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the way, Darwin actually, even though this discussion is tending to discount heavily, if not to dismiss his theories, Darwin is emerging as a fine writer, a wise man, and in all kinds of ways an honest man. One doubt, well, he recognized the problem with the Cambrian record, and then he recognized this huge question of where does the mind come from? Yeah. Where does all right, Michael.